The Holy Gospel according to John chapter 20. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We've seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you've seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through him believing, you may have life in his name. This is the good news of Jesus Christ. Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Now, we all know that the disciples were not afraid of all of the Jews. The disciples were Jews. Their families were Jews. It wasn't all the Jews that the disciples were afraid of, right? They were afraid of the Jewish authorities, the chief priests, the scribes and Pharisees, the ones who had put Jesus to death, the ones who might want to put them to death. The disciples had reason to be afraid. Any minute, they could be next. So there the disciples were huddled together trying to stay calm under very trying circumstances. Their Lord and Savior, their teacher and friend, the one they loved, had just been executed. Can you remember a time when you were afraid? Maybe you're waiting for a test results, or maybe someone you love is near death, or maybe you hear noises and you think someone's breaking into your house, or maybe you're afraid that you're going to lose your job. Maybe you were in the military and were facing very real threats on your life. What if, at that very moment, a trusted, beloved friend came and stood beside you and said, Peace be with you. 
Can you feel how your body reacts? For me, I can feel the tension leave from my shoulders and my stomach. It just kind of dissipates a little bit. You're finally able to let go of that breath you were holding in. And at last, you can really exhale. And as you exhale, the tension continues to leave. Jesus breathed on them, giving them the very breath they needed and said, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Whose sins was Jesus talking about here? I have always thought of this as the future sins that the disciples who handed down become us would forgive, much like we do the confession this morning, right? That's what I, I thought. But, but maybe this was a much more specific sin geared to the very circumstance the disciples found themselves in. Remember, just a few days earlier from the cross, Jesus said, forgive them, for they do not know what they're doing. Forgive them. Is Jesus reminding the disciples to forgive those who executed him? The very ones the disciples are hiding from behind locked doors? If Jesus can forgive them from the cross, then surely the disciples can forgive them from this locked room, the room that keeps them prisoners of their own fears. Forgive them. Love them. Love your enemies. Have no fear. In Luke 6, Jesus tells his disciples, but I say to you that listen, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Have no fear. Love them. Love your enemies. So hard to do. So hard to do. It is a simple, straightforward, and often neglected fact. The opposite of love is not hate. The opposite of love is fear. Love and fear cannot exist together. That's why we are told, do not fear, over 170 times in the Bible. I give you a new commandment that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. Jesus' commandment to love one another is impossible if we are fearful. We can't do it. We just can't. There he is, standing there, standing right beside you. Peace be with you. If you forgive the sins of any, any, that includes ourselves, and sometimes that's the hardest person to forgive, the sins are forgiven. But the choice is ours to make, to forgive or not to forgive. If you forgive the sins of any, they're forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they're retained. Immediately, you can feel the tension disappear and joy fill the room. It's Jesus. He's alive. He's here with us. Suddenly, your fear is gone. The world has no power over us. We're free. Free from what we've done and from what we haven't done. We're free from guilt, free from fear, free to love one another. What a gift! If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. The one who doesn't forgive the sins retains them. How is that, man? I'm choosing to hold on to someone else's sins? Let me say that again. The one who doesn't forgive the sins retains them. The sins remain 
in the one who doesn't forgive. When we don't forgive, we are the ones who carry those sins with us and within us, like carrying a dead weight knapsack on our back within our souls. Jesus tells us that it's our choice. If you forgive the sins of any, they're forgiven. The choice is up to us. On that evening of the first day of the week, Jesus modeled for his disciples what forgiveness feels like. Forgiveness. True forgiveness is a gift. There is nothing we can do to make it happen, right? You can apologize to someone, but that doesn't mean they're going to forgive you. You can do all kinds of restitution and reparations and acts of showing that you're, you're repentant, but that's not going to do it. Re forgiveness is a gift, freely given, from the one who's injured to the one who's caused the injury. For forgiveness to be forgiveness, it has to be freely given, a gift with no conditions. Forgiveness flows from the one injured as a gift to the one who's caused harm. And by giving this gift of forgiveness, we get a gift. We are now free to love our neighbor, freely love our neighbor. To those closest to Jesus, to those who'd abandoned him, denied him, betrayed him, Jesus appeared in the room and showered on them radical forgiveness. The disciples didn't earn it, didn't expect it, and didn't deserve it. In Romans 5, we hear, but God proves his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Before we repented, before we changed our ways, God loved us. While we were still sinners, God forgave us. And this is the model for us to follow if we're followers of Jesus, right? God forgives in abundance. We say that we're made in God's image. How is this manifested? Are we as freely forgiving as Jesus? In these first days following the crucifixion and resurrection, we can choose to follow the example of our Lord and Savior. We can follow Jesus, who from the cross forgave those who put him to death. On day one, Jesus tells his disciples, and that's us, right? Peace be with you. As the Father sent me, so I send you. What does he mean by this? Where is he sending us? Sending us out into the world that God so loves so that we can bring radical forgiveness with us. And with this forgiveness comes peace. Peace, which the world so desperately needs right now. Peace be with you. Let us pray. Here we are before you, Lord. We are always before you. You hold in mind each one of us as if there were no one else in the world, but we are often unaware of your presence. Here, together, coming to meet with you, we become conscious of you as the reality the true basis of life. Amen.